Hello, gentle viewers. This is of Indian, welcoming you back to a new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 2018. So, in our previous episode, things didn't go exactly as we planned. We still finished 84 and 70, a very good record for a 154 game schedule. But we ran into a bus I'll call the Washington Nationals, who just obliterated the AL, and it led to a bad time for us. But we enter into the 1944 season looking to make some changes. And our first change is going to be finding a new hitting coach. So let's start by looking up hitting coaches. We've got several that are good. So we need to decide which skills in particular we want to emphasize. Do you want to emphasize contact, power, patience, or does it not matter at all? So if we take a look at, say, a Kevin Lind, he would get along really well with Woody English and Bruce Campbell. If we look at contact, we'd be talking about Lou Boudreau. But given how few people we have right now of any offensive capability... I think we might be best served finding a neutral coach. Somebody who doesn't really have any tendencies. Because there's not really a particular aspect of our team that we want to uh, focus upon. So let's go ahead and hire Chris Allen. He wants $3,300, and you know what? We'll give him a shot. Now, as we progress, and this is something you could do in your own games as well, you might decide eventually, hey, I have a couple of superstars that really need a boost in one particular area, and then it might be a good idea to hire a non-neutral guy. The second thing we need to do in this offseason episode is take a look at the free agents and see what it is we can come up with. So we really need depth in the outfield, or even a starter in the outfield. <coughs> But there really isn't much. I mean, there is Bobby Doer, who in real life was a quite outstanding player, but he's never made the majors. And I don't know that he's a good fit for us. Okay, let's start by just looking at the outfielders. Because we need depth no matter what. And the best way to get depth is through free agency. So Lou Finney focuses on contact with a decent bit of gap power and he doesn't strike out very much. And these are all very good stats. These are all very good things. He might be a fairly decent left fielder. He's even an Iron Man. Other possibility is Red Howell. Now, Red Howell is a pure left fielder, but he's a little bit more varied in his offensive capabilities. Now, the problem is statistically, Howell hasn't been any great shakes for quite some time. And this is problematic. His bat's been gone from below average to slightly above average. But he did have a good season as recently as two years ago. Now, the other thing we might want to consider is that we do need someone who can play multiple positions. And that might make, like, a Frank Demery more attractive. Because remember, we're not necessarily looking for a top player. We're looking for depth. And ideally someone who could maybe handle more than just a corner. Um, Jim Graves has little to no redeeming quality. Cecil Garriott. Little to no redeeming qualities. And then we're going to get into a bunch of very similar players. So it really comes down to Finney or Howell. Now, Finney's got good contact and good gap power. 
He hasn't really had a chance to prove it recently, but it looks like he could still contribute to, contribute at some sort of offensive level. He just hasn't been given an opportunity. He's been platooned or came off the bench. He won't hit for a lot of home runs, but he should hit quite a few doubles. He's a few seasons removed from his last really productive season, which was 1936. Howell, on the other hand, is a more balanced hitter, but it looks like he hasn't really been a top-notch hitter and a reliable player in some time. I didn't look at Danny Amaral yet, did I? Um, Amaral's got some decent offensive tools. But he hasn't even played in the major since 39, and that was just for a cup of coffee. What about Andres? You know what? Let's take a look at these guys based on batting ratings. This is going to be a far more useful way to make our comparisons. Because we will see a lot more information at a glance. <clears throat> now here's an interesting choice. Doc Kramer is away from being a regular player, but he's got a few advantages over these others. He can play center, and we definitely need a backup outfielder. He hits for pretty solid contact. He's got decent gap power, and he doesn't strike out very much. And his bat was above average as recently as 39. Oh, he didn't play at all last season. Were you injured? You've just been sitting... You just... Wow, you were out an entire season for free agency. Hmm... Okay, so I want someone who's fairly decent at contact, and that'll help us clear off our list a bit. Both Kramer and Finney profile to be very similar. What about a Worthington Day? Oh no, he's actually got 40 contact. So really these are the these are the useful hitters. As a hitter, Demery is clearly has the best ratings. He's another one who really hasn't had a chance at the major league level. And he can play either corner pretty well. But he doesn't play center. I think I'm talking myself into Doc Kramer. And I think we will go ahead and sign him. I think we'll actually sign him and Demery. Because here's my thinking. We need depth. And that means signing more than one player. So I'm going to go ahead. Because we got loads of money for free agents, right? I'm going to go ahead and offer you a one-year deal. And I'm going to come back and do the same for Demery. It may turn out that neither one of you actually gets to play. But... If we look at our own roster, for example, Gus Coach has been garbage pretty much his entire career. I only kept him because he supposedly had good home run power, and he's done literally nothing with it. In fact, I'm going to cut him now. I'm going to make you bleed, bro. Not really bleed, but you know what I mean. Um, And with that said, do we gain any new minor league teams, or we still just got the one? We still just have the one. Well, I guess that's reasonable enough. Let's go ahead and advance a bit and see what kind of reactions we get from our free agent targets. Because we're in a very weird... We're in a very weird place. We're, actually, I guess it's not that weird, is it? Where we need veterans more than we need rookies unless we can get really good rookies. 
And yet, it's going to be hard for us to get the really good rookies. Because our system isn't very deep. Okay, so our gold gloves, no St. Louis Browns. Well, I guess that's to be expected. And there we go. 46 times for George Sizzler. Not exactly what I'm looking for, but okay. Uh, Willis Hudlin. Actually, a really good relief from real life, too. Silver Sluggers. Not a single one of our players. Hmm. We're never going to get Rookie of the Year. Really? Dutch Leonard? Was this season all that great? He did lead the league in war and innings pitch and was tied for the lead in wins. So I guess that's reasonable enough. <clears throat> Stupid jerks. Alright, well we'll sim up to the winter meeting start. We should hopefully here be here and back from these. There we go. We got both of them. And again, these are marginal moves. But our team was so good last season... That depth is really what we need. And this is another place the draft can come through for us. We don't even need high upside players. We need players with with low ceilings. A player who will be major league ready relatively quickly. Because we've got projects like George Wilson. And Wilson is quite a ways away from the majors. I'd say he's at least another two to three seasons away. So I have to hope that Woody English can hold it together until he's ready. Or, unless he makes some kind of huge uptick. And I don't know that that'll happen, but maybe it will. Stupid Dutch Leonard. Dutch Leonard did not lead the league in pitching war. Larry French did. Jerk. George Brock we hit for the cycle. Who gives a shit? I don't. First base. Oh, I didn't even think to look at first base. Do we have anyone even remotely interesting at that position? I didn't even think about that. Damn, George Proust. Alright. You know what? Let's check the trading block. <coughs> You're just garbage, Billy Sullivan. I don't know why on earth you're even rated a 50 unless it's just how good your defense is. This is more what I'm looking for. Why are you unhappy? Disruptive influences. So someone on your roster is an asshole. He's pretty decent, and I might be able to get him for cheap. What about Lonnie Frey? Good discipline, good play at first base. Not a great hitter. Ideally, want to go with 50 or 55 contact. And right now, Dick Siebert's the only person who fills that role. All right, Dickie boy. What do I have to give up? I can give you virtually anything. I will happily give you a future list pitcher in exchange for someone who might actually start on my team. Done. And we'll see how Sieber does in the, um, in spring training. Is there any other position I wouldn't mind shoring up? I've got a lot of crap at left field. 
Let me shift Demery over to left for now. And then see if that changes his rating. Nope, it gives me 340s. And all Allen does is hit for contact. He's relatively popular, but I think maybe we're better off moving on from him. But maybe we'll wait and see. Buster Adams is just garbage. I'ma cut him. Which is really a shame, because he's only 28, but he just has just done nothing for us. Okay. Absolutely Hall of Fame voting. One of my joy of joys. <clears throat> Bottom Lee's not that good. In real life, he made the Hall of Fame, and he had absolutely no business doing so. If you look at his career numbers in real life, does that really scream out Hall of Famer to you? It doesn't really to me. He's another one that made it in because he's, um... Oh, he played for the Cardinals, so I wonder if that's like a gas house gang kind of thing. Like Dizzy Dean helped get him in. Maybe. Uh, Pete Donahue's a 300 game winner. No question he deserves to go in. Jimmy Dykes, absolutely. I'm going to get a little more circumspect about pitching just because 50 war seems like it's actually a bit low. Yeah, he's not really a Hall of Famer. Each day pitch over 500 games, I just weren't very good at it. Showboat Fisher. These numbers don't say Hall of Famer to me. He was decent, but I mean, it's hard to get excited about a player like that. My man, Lou Fonseca, you best believe you're getting voted in. What's the last metric? It's, um, Hall of Fame monitor, that's right. Wow, really? Jaws? We must be super pumped with left fielders if he's actually below them for Jaws. Then again, Fonseca was just amazingly good for a very long time. He never really peaked. I mean, his best season was 1923. Hmm. He never really did peak. He was just consistently very good year in and year out. And sometimes that's enough. The man had almost 4,000 hits. I don't know how you can complain about that. I certainly don't. Um, Freddie Frisch... I don't see a real reason to vote for him. George Grantham. What makes you look so good? Oh, you played second. And you got almost 3,000 hits. And a decent number of homers. A lot of triples. A lot of doubles. And you stole a bunch of... Yeah, George Grantham. Get on there, Chief. Yeah, 50, 50 war doesn't seem to be enough for pitchers anymore. There's just too many good players. Honey Manoush doesn't do it for me. Mac McHenry did get 3,000 hits. And a fair number of homers. See, these are the kinds of players who kind of get hurt a little bit by the way we normally think about Hall of Famers today. In that, people who just accumulate stats are viewed a little bit more negatively. But it's hard to say that anyone who has 3,000 hits doesn't deserve to be in. Pitching, Rifle Jim, maybe. Something I think was talking about Jim Middleton in the comments for one of my videos. I don't remember who, though. 
Yeah, there's a lot of pitchers who are right around the same level. And none of them really stand out to me. I mean, clearly Pete Donahue is a first ballot Hall of Famer for us. And I think he went to the Hall of Fame in real life, too. Oh, maybe not. He actually had a real rough career. Hmm. Anyway, let's submit our ballot. I think five people is enough. Let's end winter meetings. And the winter meetings are ended. Intentional walks up playing shortstop. Joe Gordon. What are we going to get in the draft this season? I just don't know what kind of luck we're talking about here. We're in some kind of way here. We were a little bit worse than average this season. We were still really good, but the good news is other teams were much better, which means there's a far higher chance of finding a decent uh, player. Wow. What did you give up? A bad pitcher, a bad, a decent pitcher, maybe, and a decent catcher. Washington gave up an awful lot for West. And despite his attractive looking ratings, West isn't actually that great. What, he plays a catcher in right field, too? Eh, he's kind of a bad hitter. Okay. So who was a big deal in real life? Boom. Eddie Yoss, Joe Nuxhall, Nellie Fox, Duke Snyder, Granny Hamner. That's a good collection of talent. I don't know about some of these other guys, but this core here is really good. Um, it's highly unlikely any of them will fall to me, though. Why do I not have two first-round picks? I don't know, 13. Eh. We'll see what happens. Just to get a quick overview, how good are the best of players? Yeah, there are three elite players. Cal McClish was pretty good, too. There aren't 15 good players. There just aren't. We'll see who's left. The Yank... Oh, the Giants got number one. They'd be stupid not to take Duke Snyder. Did Duke Snyder play... Oh, God, what's wrong with me? Duke Snyder never played for the Giants. Duke Snyder played for the Dodgers. Because it was, um... Yeah, Mickey Willie and the Duke. Yeah, Mickey Mantle played for the Yankees. Duke Snyder played for the Giant for the Dodgers, and Willie Mays played for the Giants. One of them were in New York. Okay, let's wait till we get to pick. All right, so we got a couple of pitchers left, and then we're talking some mediocre hitters. Kent Peterson holds no attraction for me. <clears throat> and neither does Art Fowler. I mean, he's got lots of stamina and he throws kind of hard. But for a 21-year-old, I'd ideally want more upside. Which leaves us picking between the 40s. And there are quite a few. So let's start by focusing on batters. And then going to our favorite batting potential view. There's literally almost no contact hitters here. Potentially. Jim Greengrass at least has an advantage these others don't. And that's an incredible potential amount of home run power. Roush has no position. And the rest of his tools aren't that great. <clears throat> Greengrass is the best choice of the remaining hitters, so I will happily draft him. 
if I get lucky and I can pick another player of, of this caliber, I'll grab Les Layton too. But I bet he's gone. You stupid pirates. You buttholes. That was my player. Let's look at pitching. Who's got the highest potential stuff? A shortstop? Arden McCaskey is actually a pretty decent pitcher. Like, really decent. He'd only ever be a reliever. But he's also pretty big, and if he fills out a little bit... He could be a real diamond in the rough. I'm gonna take him. I'll need to remember to convert him. Ah, uh, Kent Pearson. Oh, you're the one of them that's considered impossible because you want a crap ton of money. No one's saying you're not a good pitcher. You're just not an exciting one. Uh, individual pitch potential. Does anyone have, like, an outstanding super plus fastball? Stan Beard. If he can control these pitches, oh god, I have to take a shot at him. And then one more. And now let's look at all players default. Okay, now let's look at the white whale of pitching, which is control. He's just a reliever. Alright, we'll just go ahead and, and auto-draft the rest of this. We made some good picks. These aren't necessarily sexy picks, but they're good picks. We got someone with pretty... Oh, I did actually get a second first rounder. I will happily give you your demands, because I've got so much money I don't know what to do with it. McCaskey, I will happily meet your demand. I will happily meet your demand. Okay. Happily meet your demand. Wow. These guys don't really have a very high opinion of themselves. Um... Miracle Witch is kind of good. I don't know if he's that good, though. Joe Passero, no. Andy Hansen, no. Picoludo, eh eh. Rube Walker, nope. I will actually sign Miracle Witch. Just because I got extra money and because I just don't have that many players who can even handle center. Oh, uh, right. I have to do that here, don't I? I'll accept your budget. And to be honest, there's just a lot of garbage here. There's a reason these guys fell so... Okay, Thomas Lind. That's pretty decent at two positions. I will... I will happily... Oh, he's an impossible. What about Eddie Basinski? Nah. Let's just go ahead and sim up to the Hall of Fame voting results. Greengrass instantly joined. Good. Again, raw. But. I've got a lot of relievers, mate. I mean, a lot of, a lot of relievers. Alright. So, Arden McCaskey. You were one of the ones who wanted to convert, weren't you? It's a shame to use a, lose a right fielder that's that good. But making you into a pitcher? You actually have potential now. 
Is it going to take you a while? I think you were the outfielder, yeah. Wow, Jim Turner's 40 years old. There's my other guy. Bam. Wow. I don't think you realize exactly how powerful a pitcher with this kind of strikeout rate and these two pitches can be even if he never masters throwing strikes. He's a bullpen guy. I'm having like a bullpen revolution in the 1940s. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. It's been a decent offseason so far. <clears throat> Damn, Fonseca just fell short. Grantham made it, and Donahue made it. And they were both first ballot guys, weren't they? Yeah. I went interesting to get Oh, Aw, there went Baby Doll Jacobson. He was really good for us for a short time. What? Tommy Thomas? I would have voted for him just to keep him on the ballot. You know, he pitched this team through a lot of lean years. I mean a lot of lean years. He was my fourth overall draft pick in 1925. Maybe wasn't the best choice for us. He was never exceptional. But he gave us innings. And he was consistently had a decent war. Up until the very end. Tommy Thomas. You deserve a freaking medal. Not 1.4% of the vote. Uh, makes me sad. Makes me sad. Ooh, Jakey Mays in his fifth year. Man, he pitched a long time. He was actually not bad either. Only ever had one outstanding season though. Uh, makes sense they kept him out. Oh, well. Okay, you can't dwell on the people that have come and gone, right? We've added depth this season. And it's not sexy. And it's not the kind of thing that wins championships. Except when it pushes you over the top. Um, well, I'm going to get all the third round picks next season. All of them. It's going to seriously be a season where it's going to be like 20 picks in the third round and I'll have 21 of them. They'll just add another pick. They're like, you know what, just have another one. You never signed your third rounders. It's because they're generally not signing. They're not worth signing. And it's because of the way... And it's following his history. And keep in mind again, and I've not mentioned this in a few episodes before, there was no major... There was no inaugural draft in the 1940s. It didn't exist. And I can change settings to actually make that a thing. I just don't think it's worth us wasting our time. Um, do I want to go ahead and like increase my player development budget? What's wrong with going for 250 grand? Do it. How much are other people paying for it? I'm paying double the league baseline. You know what? 300. Yeah. Let's just let's just blow them all away with how we spend our money. We've got two minor league teams now. But that was my point. So there's no point holding these giant drafts with all these rounds when the minor leagues are so tiny. It's 
really doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's part of the reason why we're missing the really high ceiling players. Because in real life, there are only so many really great ones. It is a problem. Oh, Paul Derringer. Someone was bound to pick him up. I just had no use for him. Pitching is one thing we're, we're fairly set at. Okay. Anyone who deserves a shot in spring training. William Justice. You just suck, mate. You're decent at stealing bases, but you don't even do that very often. Yeah, there's a whole lot of trash right now. You are a long way away, my friend. But you did well in your first full season in professional baseball. Well, your second, I guess. You just need to keep getting you seasoning. Because the key is going to be your home run power. Your contact. So if you can hit for power. And if you can draw walks. Your contact and your defense. You'll be carried by your defense. Almost no matter what. But your power has to develop. To be... Even the future Woody English. Okay. Alright, we got some people now. They're not exciting people, but we got people. Okay. So spring training is going to be 26 players. Anyone else deserve a shot? Hockenberry's not that great a catcher. Um, Gideon draws walks and nothing else. Mirko Witz is me. Man, I can't believe you were a first round draft pick. You're just terrible. Um, <clears throat> I would take almost literally anything for him. An actual prospect who's pretty good at playing second base. It's going to be hard for me not to take Bob Mavis. Done. He just instantly became one of the best players in my minor leagues. Did you just put him right in the majors? No, where'd you put Bob Mavis? Oh, you put him in, uh, you put him here. Okay. I'm going to give you a shot in spring training. I mean, Bill Hart actually does hit for power too, but... I'm going to try to flip Will Just William Justice and see if I can get something interesting for him. I can get Eddie Morgan who can't hit. Carol Campbell who can't pitch. Mel Amata who can hit but can't play his defense. A really good defensive shortstop who, who will never hit. But there's still value in this. And a center fielder who doesn't play center field that well. No. Let's go through spring training and see what life is like for us. Uh, go ahead and let the bench coach set up everything. The bench coach must feel really excited when spring training comes along. He's like, yeah, I matter now. What in God's name are you doing to Larry French? Larry French is a starter until his arm falls off. I don't know what's wrong with you. He's got to prove that he can't pitch anymore. He had an 8.3 war. That's not something I'm going to mess with. 
Until he proves he can't handle it, he's my dude. Uh, you'll be my stopper. I'm not ready to give you a shot yet, but I do think you'll be the first one in line. I'm going to call you an emergency starting pitcher who works in long relief. Clyde Reed is the other one, although he hasn't developed his stuff yet. Okay. I don't know why you would think I wouldn't want Larry French to be a top dog. He's so good. He's been consistently amazing. We were kind of stinking up the joint in spring training. Damn. A trade proposal. Is this a genuine proposal? Or is this just you dicking around with me? You will give me... If you like Carl Scheib, I'm happy to meet you halfway. But you can't give me this. This is garbage. This is a third baseman who'll never hit. You gotta have a more interesting prospect. Arnold Banta will hit for power and nothing else. Mets will draw walks and nothing else. Vic Rasky was actually pretty good in real life. Um, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Give me less Mueller. You'll tell me to go fuck myself. Wow, you really like Leonard Morrison. I think his Morrison's actually kind of good. Eh. Nah, I'm good. Another trade proposal. You'll send me another player with no talent. Nope. There's something about him that Philadelphia's just going nuts over. Maybe he's got like photos of their owner or something. Like licking a goat or something. I don't know. I feel kind of bad when the wheels do come off for Larry French. Because he's been so good for so long. That when it does come off, it's going to come off hard. I mean, he's just going to be a garbage pitcher. And it'll come out of nowhere. Like an RKO. Top 100 prospects. Not remotely close. These are some damn good players, actually. That are toward the top. Got two Hall of Famers here. Wasn't Al Rosen a third baseman in real life? Make sure this is the guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, Al Rosen was definitely a third baseman. But he wasn't a Hall of Famer, either. So, we were both right. We were both right. Kiner was a home was a Hall of Famer. He had like five hundred plus home runs. <clears throat> really? <clears throat> How did Ralph Kiner get into the Hall of Fame? He wasn't that good. Like not really at all. Oh, okay, Connor did hit. Connor had a fair number of home runs. 400 homers. That was a big deal for his time. He had a lot of power. Hmm. Gil Hodges never made the Hall of Fame. A lot of people think he should have. Maybe he deserved to. Hank Bauer was good, but never home run. Never uh, Hall worthy. Same thing for Del Ennis. What's really sad is so you got two for the Cubs and one for the Pirates here. And I guarantee you we are dead last 
for minor league systems. We are not dead last. Thanks entirely to George Wilson. Don't fuck it up, Wilson. All right, let's build our team. Let's quickly set up the pitching staff and the lineups, and then we'll conclude the episode. Nine pitchers seems excessive. It seems real excessive. I think Jenkins is the one who goes down. I didn't mean to send you there. I want to send you triple A. I don't want I just want you in the majors. And then yeah, everyone else gets to make the roster. Do I really want Mavis here already? No, I want him to have a year in the majors, minors to work on his stuff. I'll just call up William Justice just to fill a roster spot. Okay. Alright, so my starting left fielder is actually going to be Demery. Because he's the best overall hitter and he can still play a mean, a reasonable left field. I almost said mean. More like slightly irritated. Um, you guys are good. He was amazing last season, too. He won 30 games in 1941. No wonder they gave him the Cy Young that year. He won it two years in a row. Hmm. Um, What are your career stats like? You've been really good. Like, 111 war is pretty damn solid, even if you don't have 300 wins. And you'll probably never get to them. You played for some bad Browns teams. I should have had, honestly, I should have had the four-man rotation the whole time, but I didn't think of it, so. <coughs> How many career strikeouts do you have already? 1,600? That's pretty crazy. Okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Pitching staff, good. Lineups. This is where I make my money. Or last year, not make my money because I ignore fixing it, but whatever. Sears starts. So Seabird hits for a higher average. McQuinn does everything else better. Why did I want Seabird? Oh, Seabird's, an, Seabird's a righty killer. By a lot. What about McQuinn? McQuinn's merely pretty decent. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually let Siebert start. Um, Bartel will be playing second. Got a lot of dicks on this team. Um, And then Salty, you will be my defensive sub because you're an amazing second baseman. Um... And Bill Hart can offer some backup, too. McQuinn will back up at first. Trush will back up at catcher. And Trush is the better catcher by far. So he can defensive sub. I'd like McQuinn to play at least once a week here. Let's give him a season where he's less important. And maybe he will, uh, maybe he'll straighten some things out. I definitely want Hart as a pinch hitter. Okay, Boudreau. I'd actually rather have Hart starting at third than Justice, so we'll do Hart and then we'll do Justice. Woody English, Fred Vaughn. Damari will start, Allen will back up. Allen will be my number one pinch hitter. And Bowser will back him up. I'll have Hank Sauer playing in center. Kramer backing him up. Bruce Campbell playing in right. And Kramer backing him up. <coughs> I 
Best peer hitter on the team is Boudreaux, and it's not particularly close, so he's number three. Followed by Bruce Campbell, so he'll be number he'll be the cleanup guy like he was last season. Then we've got three guys at fifty-five. Who's better at drawing walks? It's actually it's Woody English. I want Woody English to be my leadoff hitter. And I want Damari hitting second. Sauer hits fifth. Bartel hits sixth. Sears hits sixth. And then Siebert cleans up. Yeah. And then Vaughn and Bowser will be my two dudes on the base paths. Got it. This isn't a real murderer's Um, Should Bartell be my leadoff guy? The thing is, he's losing discipline, which is somewhat troubling. But he still got on base a lot last season. And it makes more sense in catapulting Damari straight to the leadoff spot. No, let's go like this. Woody English really deserved a promotion in the spot. He is getting older, though. He won't be able to take this forever. Okay. And with that, I think we'll conclude the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Um... I genuinely don't know how we're going to do next season. We're about due for a crash, I think. If everything breaks right, we could make another World Series in the next two to three years. But when the bottom drops out, it's going to drop out hard. And I hope Lou Boudreaux part of the next Brown, great Browns team, but I'm pretty sure... That the Woody Englishes, the Bruce Campbells, and the Dick Bartels will not be. Sauer and Boudreaux give me something to build on. Sauer's actually developed decent contact, which was not anticipated for him. I expected he'd just be a good power hitter. But yeah, he's actually gotten to be fairly decent at contact. He's only had two seasons without double-digit homers, and both seasons he didn't play a full season. So, very good. He's a pretty good center fielder. But that's going to be it for this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please like, subscribe, comment down below. Um, For the rest of this week, I think we're going to be a little more freeform with the episodes. Um, Instead of sticking strictly to the half hour limit. Um, This was a pretty complex and detailed offseason, which is why I took more time on it. But if, say, this season we fly through it quickly, and we very well might, then I probably won't bother waiting till the next one to do the offseason. So we'll just see what happens. But until then, this has been Avindian, and I bid you good day.